Hello everyone. I've wanted to do this for a while and dig into details of making bias pieces and today I will be recording a process of making the Mercer bias skirt. Uh, first of all I wanted to thank everyone for your support and especially those people who have come and purchase the patterns. I'm looking forward to your feedback and um, actually seeing the process of you making it. And I hope that this could, be a be uh, could become a supplemental material for you or for those that are not sure about the bias and maybe want to try it, but um, for some reason bias scares you. I completely understand this. This is not for the beginners, but I hope I can demystify the process a little bit. Today I'm going to be covering a Mercer bias skirt and I wanted to talk a little bit about the cutter's moss. The cutter's moss is included with your instructions and um, when you place it together with your pattern it gives you a pretty good outlook of what is needed and what the steps are in order to complete this project. So let's go over the sections in the cutter's moss. You have your description. Uh, the size, I want you to put your size that you are uh, making. The date is pretty important, especially if you're digging into something that you've done a couple years ago or maybe a couple months later. Um, it's, it's a good reminder of when you did the project. The fabric that you chose to make this skirt with and the fabric consumption, even though the skirt actually doesn't come with lining, but if you do want to line it, you just cut the same exact pattern in the lining. So you want to indicate what is the fabrication for lining and, uh, and the consumption, which is going to be the same here, most likely, unless the width of the fabric is different. You have your sketch for your visual, you have the pattern pieces. So you know there's only two pattern pieces. Uh, that you have in the envelope. Um, then your trimming is very easy. It's an elastic bend. That's the only thing you, you need in order to put the skirt together. And then you have your very quick summary of the order of instruction, uh, the construction order, sorry. So you have close your seams, you know, it says that use the French seam and the detail instructions where you can find it on the page. So it's, I, I find it an extremely useful uh, tool to have. Oh, and one more thing about notes. I left the space because just in case you want to make it shorter, you want to make it longer, you want to make some kind of uh, notes for you in the future, whether what you already did with the pattern and changed it or what you want to do and experiment with it next time. So it's, it's a good idea to throw everything in here so next time you pick up your pattern and you want to make it again, uh, you have your notes in front of you. So, and, and it's together with the pattern. So it's, it really is a very useful tool to have and it makes the organization uh, much easier. With pattern, uh, you're going to have two identical pieces and it's actually going to represent more on a second, this pattern than this pattern because you don't have the seam lines on, on the pattern. You kind of have a true production pattern that you will find in the industry. So the only thing that you have indicated are your notches. You have the notch here, which will indicate that it's a half an inch seam allowance. You'll have the notch here, um, which is a three eighths seam allowances. And you will also have a notch on the bottom. Here will be half an inch, here will be a quarter. And then you will have the most important ones are up here. These are the two notches. These are the two notches that I want you to notch. Those are the only ones. And um, sorry, one more I did forget. 
it's the notch at center front and center back. This is gonna help us set the elastic band into the waist. So remember, so what do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five notches for each piece when you are going to be cutting out your skirt. And remember that when you're cutting bias, you want to cut it on a single layer and you want to have all your pieces already made, all the pieces of the pattern already prepared for cutting. It's gonna make it easier for you to lay it out on the fabric as well. So, and plus, if you are using a top and a skirt, it's a really good idea to cut those together because sometimes uh, the fabric consumption uh, will be a lot better if you're cutting out all pieces at the same time. So just keep that in mind too. Let's talk about cutting. Um, and this is how I cut all my slinky fabrics that are usually pretty difficult to just cut. So first I lay out a layer of tissue paper. It's in the roll. I'm just showing you uh, a mock-up of what I'm doing. Then, and this is the important step, is when you need to start laying out the fabric and you need to make sure that your salvage is parallel to the other side of the salvage and you need to also establish your cross grains. And one way to establish a cross grain is to just take a pin, you know, you're gonna pull one thread, you're gonna pull it out and it's gonna leave a mark, a clear mark where the cross grain is and it's gonna give you a pretty good idea. So when you're laying out this big piece, basically what you're, doing is you're going around and you're trying to make sure that the fabric, the way the fabric lays is that the cross grain is perpendicular to the, to the salvage, to the regular length grain. This is also a good step when you can inspect your fabric and see if there are any damages in the fabric. So, if you do see something, you might want to mark this. Maybe you'll mark it with pin for now. And after you lay another piece of tissue paper on top, you want to make sure all the damaged pieces for you to remember that this is the place where you want to avoid this. Make sure to remove the pins and this and now we need to, if your paper is unmarked like mine, we need to establish a couple uh, grain lines, like the straight grain and the cross grain. So I usually just do that, like I draw a couple lines indicating the length grain and few for the cross grain. Now you have your pattern and this is when you want to make sure that your grain hits both the cross grain and the length grain, right? And now, I mean, all it is, now you're gonna pin this around and it's ready to cut. Um, of course, if this was a top or a dress, you have some bias pieces that will be used for to make uh, spaghetti straps and a lot of uh, bias tape. Um, also, I just wanted to mention, if you're making a skirt and a top, it's much better to lay out both patterns at the same time. Your fabric consumption is going to be a lot more efficient when you cut two pieces at the same time. Let's move on to fabrics. And here I'm showing you something that I've already worked with, uh, making bias pieces. 
and probably the most obvious ones are the silks that are you know the ones that with the good drape something like silk city c um or silk charmeuse you can actually use both sides it's your preference uh, you don't have to use the shiny side if you don't want to uh, then i have these crepes i think the content is visco mostly viscose and acid a little bit of acetate i a lot of high-end brands use this um, use this fabric i think it's actually like even the mill the italian mill soluzioni mill i believe some companies refer to as soluzioni crepe um, but good luck finding it by the name um, i couldn't but um it's just as you can see it's it's got a really good drape and i find them easier to work with than silks then i also made this dress that i will be covering in the future and i was playing around with placing um you know the trim on it um but it's i don't know i think it's a viscose you know like most of the shops where you shop they uh don't necessarily give you the right content especially like if you shop at mood like me um, a lot of them will be missing the content so i think it's viscose it's pretty heavy so what i also did with this fabric is is that for the hem i decided to leave it raw and just did a stay stitch because you know bias, bias doesn't fray so it, and even if it frays just a little bit it's not really gonna fray but um, you know with use it's gonna start developing a certain edge it still gives you like a pretty modern approach to finishing too and uh, another fabric that i used this is the black dress on um featured on the website it i have no idea what this is but it's some kind of satin it doesn't even feel that i don't know if it has viscose in it it might be more synthetic -y, but it also has a good drape so uh it was relatively easy to work with too so that's probably going to be another skirt or dress very soon and today i'm going to be using this very heavy i think again it's um i think it's viscose it has a shiny side and a matte side and it's very crepey looking it's very uneven in texture but it is a very heavy fabric so i was thinking that you know moving into winter months this is a good option even though it's gonna work good for summer as well so i'm not gonna line it when i make the first version but if it's really see-through because i assume it might be because it does show some dark colors even though i'm not gonna wear dark colors under or try not to um we'll see i can always add aligning after and i think i'm also going to be using a raw edge at the hem for this one too and now i'm going to start cutting it out i'm going to show you the big format you know i usually do it on the floor so because i don't have a big table um, those lucky ones that do have a table i'm very jealous uh, i can only do it at work uh, but um, yes at home it's always the floor that's that's my table and here's my fabric already laid out on tissue paper so this is the salvage and i try to make it as straight as possible and also with the help of a ruler i try to establish the cross grain and keep it perpendicular to salvage so i also found some damage on the fabric so i have marked this there's some line that is more visible even on the other side. And now I'm gonna sandwich this and start laying out my pattern. My pattern is placed and uh, since I had some space, I throw in another Worcester top in there, um, but we're concentrating on a skirt here. So just to reiterate, I have my tissue paper 
fabric, then another tissue paper. Uh, I established some grain lines and with the help of those, I laid out the pattern. And uh, let's cut this out and move on to actually putting it together. I am prepared to start the sewing process. So I have my skirt cut out. Um, I have the elastic band for the waistband. I have the threads. I have my scissors that I'm going to be working with, silk pins. And uh, don't forget about the right side, uh, size of needle for the fabric that's appropriate for your fabric. And I'm not going to be using the band roll, as I mentioned before, because I'm going to go for the raw hem on this skirt. Um, and that's it. That's, uh, that's pretty much all we need to put the skirt together. I'm attaching my sides with French seam techniques. So the shiny side is my face side, therefore it's facing out. And what I usually do, I notch at the top, at the bottom, and at the notches, and then I start pinning a few more places. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. Then I'll be going to the machine and putting a quarter inch stitch up here. Then we're gonna trim it, turn it out, press it, and stitch another quarter stitch to enclose the seam. Before I start my project, I always test out my tension. Say I'm coming out from a different, uh, something else I was working on and uh, the tension was wrong for this fabric. And uh, I think I'm good with this. And I can start making the skirt. My first seam is going to be a quarter away from the edge. This is to the first part of French seams. It's not a bad idea to check your tension of the seams right away. So we only did the first stitch, but I already threw it on the form to see how it behaves. Like, did I get the tension right? Because it's so much easier to redo this now than after because right now we're going to be trimming these like extra seam allowances and once you trim it and do the other stitch it's going to be harder to undo what i'm doing now is uh, trimming these seam allowances to about one eighth maybe even a little bit less um, yeah, i think this is sufficient maybe a little less than one eighth. It's like two millimeters or so. Then I'm gonna go to the iron. I'll press the seam allowances to one side. Then I'll turn it out and I'm gonna press it to the other side. This step is just gonna facilitate making that second stitch on the French seam. And then we'll go to the machine and we'll do another quarter stitch here. My seams are trimmed and pre-pressed now. And I'm on the machine putting another quarter inch stitch up here in order to close our seam. So again, our face side now is inside. And I have to say, this uh, the wrong side feels really nice too. Anyway, continuing on.
There's one thing I wanted to show you guys um, for pressing. So now we have a French seam and we need to press it to one side. And in order to prevent the seam having an imprint on the other side of the fabric, on your main side, it's a really good idea to have a cardboard strip that you will be putting in between the seam allowance that we're pressing to one side and the main fabric. And you can use this for different fabrications. It's not just for French seams. It's basically to prevent the imprints when you're doing pressing. If you're opening a seam, then you need to get another cardboard box, I mean cardboard strip, and then have it on both sides and then pressing it when you open the seam. I am ready to attach my waistband or elastic to the waistband. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking the piece of elastic, which is about one inch bigger than my waist for a little bit of ease. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna butt this two together and use my zigzag to attach this. So this way it's a very seamless transition rather than make overlapping it and making a box and it's becoming much thicker we're going to have a more like a more seamless approach to this and the settings that i'm using for this is like the maximum width of the zigzag which is five on my machine and i'm going at the narrowest possible position which is like about half This is what we have. You see how thin it is? And it's, we're ready to move on to the next step. Now I'm gonna divide this elastic into eight equal sections. Well, we can start with four um, because we have four on our skirt because we have, um, center front and center back and side seam and side se uh, and the other side seam and they are equal distance away from each other i'm gonna do and then i'm gonna be attaching these quarters to the quarter and the skirt and then if i need a bit more guidance then i'm gonna go into sections of eight same thing on the skirt here I have my eight sections um, on the skirt and the elastic band. And what I need to do now is attach elastic band from the outside on the face side of the skirt. So I'm gonna put my seam of the elastic to one of the side seams and I'm gonna pin it. And now I'm going to pin every single section. The eighths working much better than quarters because you work with a lot less. Um, you don't have to guess so much. So. so here I'm attaching every single section to the marks. And then I'm going to throw couple more pins in between as well. My next step is going to be basting this to the skirt and then I'm gonna use the zigzag, much smaller zigzag, to put the waistband together. Okay, actually, I don't need to put more pins. I can just do it with the baste, with the thread. My elastic is basted now, and 
what I'm gonna do now is using zigzag I'm going to attach the elastic to the skirt about one eighth away from the edge and the width that I'm using for zigzag is three millimeters in width and about one millimeter in length and what's gonna happen after once we attach this we're gonna turn the elastic one time and the second time so it sits inside the skirt and the fabric is covering elastic partially on the top so this way if you're working with color print etc you don't have to worry about the color of the elastic you just need to make sure that it's either you know light for lighter colors or black for darker colors and you're going to have a very clean looking finish on the outside my elastic is attached now and I'm gonna go to the iron and I will press the fabric to kind of go all around elastic to stay flat and after I also need to tack the elastic to French seam so it stays here and I'm gonna leave it overnight on a form or on a hanger to hang and since I'm not actually doing a baby hem here I'm just gonna make sure that the French seams are secured and I'm just going to do a quarter inch stitch from the edge and that's going to be it. I mean, and this is after I cut anything, if I need to cut anything, just to make sure that the hem is even and my skirt will be finished. I am ready to finish up my skirt now. It's been hanging on the form for about a day and uh, I can just show you a little bit of uh, the waist and side seams and uh, what I did is I put it on the form and using a ruler I'm just measuring the equal distance from the floor all around let me see if I can show you that visually you see maybe not on this side on this side a little bit that it dips a little in the front so I'm just equaling this out and uh, one side seam is basically where I want it to be in my length and my other side seam is a little bit longer so that's gonna happen um, of course not all of you will have the form so leave it on a hanger and just try it on and see if you can see visual discrepancies if not just ham it as it is you know like it's a difficult process to do it by yourself especially if you don't have a form as help so just just do it with what you can and now I'm gonna trim this uh, as I said before I'm gonna make sure that my French seams are secured at the edges so they don't unravel and I'm gonna give it a quarter inch stitch all around just to stay stitched to make sure that it keeps everything in place and I'm doing my final step with the stay stitch on the hem uh, one thing I recommend is throwing a pin making sure that your fringe seam is facing the same direction as it does on the waist so in my case they're both of them are facing back towards the back and now i'm just gonna go all the way around and that's going to be my finished hem this is what it's gonna look like when I'm gonna finish my skirt is finished 
and um, I did wanted to mention one thing in this design we are using the stretchability of the bias in order to have the elasticated waist and pull it over the hip on the waist but with this fabric it doesn't stretch as much as a regular like silk charmeuse on a bias so it's exactly the same happening on the waist this is like the maximum that can stretch this out to in this heavy viscose crepe fabrication whereas in silk charmeuse i have a lot more of a range so this is easily going over the hip to waist. I mean, of course it depends on your hip to waist ratio, but this is a lot easier to accommodate just to step into a skirt um, rather than this. Like for example, for me, I'm probably gonna be uh, putting it on over the head rather than just stepping into it. So just Keep that in mind. I mean, of course you can set a zipper on the side for these styles and these styles are probably, or these fabrics, um, they're probably more appropriate for a zipper, the ones that actually don't have that much of a um, stretch on the bias. But because on a silk charmeuse to put a zipper into bias, it, it usually represents a lot of problems. You almost, almost always will have a bump where the zipper ends. Whereas if I were to put it on this skirt, it would be a lot less visible or maybe even invisible at all. So that's just one thing to keep in mind, but I wanted it to be a super simple design that anyone could do. So um, just, just always pay attention on how much of a stretch you get on a bias when you are choosing a fabric for for this project 